Hey, I'm Mike James. So you've decided you want to build a traditional iOS app using Xamarin. You don't want to use Forms, you want the UI designer so you can drag and drop your buttons and have the instant feedback about how your app's going to look. Well, you're going to have to learn auto layout. And a lot of people, and myself included, you know, only a year ago or so, um, pretty hesitant about starting with auto layout because it, it's not the easiest of things to get started with and learning about it isn't that simple either because there's not a huge amount of resources um, that tackle some of the difficulties that we hit. So I thought I'd put together this video to help you guys uh, get started with auto layout in order to design your apps to look beautiful. So I've got some good news for you. Auto layout really isn't that difficult to get started with once you remember one key thing. Every single control within your view will need an X, a Y, a width, and a height. If you've provided it with the X, a Y, the width, and the height, you've probably got yourself a valid auto layout for that view. Now, if you see any orange on, on your controls, that probably means that it's missing one of those values. And just one of those values being wrong or missing can screw up your entire auto layout. So I want to show you how you can build uh, a view with valid auto layout that's going to look great from iPhone to iPad to even running on Apple TV. So I've already gone ahead and I've designed myself a launch screen for my app. I'm calling it My Panda. Um, this is actually a bit of artwork that I grabbed uh, from another app that I'm building. It's got nothing to do with pandas. Uh, this is, in fact, for a e network error screen. I say sad panda. Boo. And uh, this is the artwork from that. But uh, we're going to recreate this for our launch screen of our application. Now, the launch screen, you normally don't see it on the app uh, launching process for very long because you've got 17 seconds to, to finish launching your app before the OS kills it. And in those 17 seconds, this is a screen that would be visible, but most apps launch significantly faster than 17 seconds. So in an ideal world, no one's going to see this view, um, but it's still worth making sure that it looks great across all the devices because, you know, they'll see it for a split second and first impressions really, really do count when it comes to mobile. So this is Xamarin Studio. I've already done a file new project and I've already added our sad panda image to our resources. Um, because it's just, just a JPEG, you can see. There's nothing special here. So first things first, I need to add uh, two labels. So we'll search for label. And I'm going to set the font. Now, there's a particular set of fonts that I use all the time when I'm building my mobile apps, because I think they look gorgeous. Uh, so we'll go custom. And we want to go medium. And let's bump that up to 28. It's a general rule for fonts. You never want to be on uh, an odd number. You, and this is kind of a rule for any UI work that you do with iOS. You want to be on an even number. You don't want your height of your labels to be 27. You want it to be 28. You see we're on 63. This isn't good. The reason it's not good is it's not the, the, it does some weird sub-pixeling render, rendering for iOS. So you always want to be on an uh, even number uh, just to make sure that depending on what size you're on, it's going to scale correctly and look great. So coming back to design quickly, we've got the text my panda. So let's uh, let's not be animals and write that by hand. We'll just copy and paste it. And then we have another label at the bottom of our view that says "lovingly made in Guildford," which is uh, something I like to put on all of my apps. But the uh, the font's a little large here. So again, we'll just come in and tweak that. We'll probably put it at 18, or oh, we could go smaller. There we go. And again, the height needs to come down a little bit. The height's currently 33, so we'll bring that down to 32. And we want that kind of floating just above the, uh, the bottom. We don't want it fixed exactly on the bottom, but just above is perfect. This we'll want to, uh, to just dock to the sides ever so slightly. But we also need to go ahead and add an image view. So we'll come to widget. He says. There we go. Come to widget, we select our sad panda and we're going to aspect fill it. In fact, we could aspect fit it as well. I think fit's probably a better option for us. Um, so we can go ahead and set 
and there's the size, the width, so just ensure that it's always going to be centered. And we'll resize this ever so slightly. Now, if we come back to our design, you'll see that these together are centered. This isn't centered on its own. If we were to center this to the view, it'd be down here and it'd be sitting over the my panda. So together they form centeredness. So this is going to require a little bit of tweaking within our within our auto layout because we could get this centered really easily. Um, in fact, we could do that. No, let's do it properly the first time. I always say start with an approach, start from the top and work your way down. But in this case, this view is so simple that we can just start wherever we want. Uh, so we're going to dock this control so that when I click drop this here, it's going to have an X value. And you may be wondering, how the hell did I get these to appear? I select the label or the control. I tap it one more time and we have these handlebars and we can click these and drag them anywhere within our view. Now what we drop them on defines what it's looking for in terms of its margin. So it's constrained. So we're going to constrain to the side of the super view. And in this case, the constraint is, the constraint is going to be about zero pixels because we're right on the edge. And you can see it's gone orange. And if we hover over the little uh, explanation mark here, we're going to see the little triangle. We're going to see that you know, we, we, we don't have a Y value right now, but we also don't have a width. So we can infer the width by using the handlebar here and dropping it. So it now has a width because it's bound to both sides. We can go ahead and set height. Uh, and we can give it the Y value that it's so desperately calling for by just dragging this handlebar to the bottom. So it's now got the margin of this gap here, which is probably a handful of pixels. In fact, we can have a look at how many pixels it has. It's 13. So why don't we go and edit that down to be, again, an even number. Boom. And now that's updated for us. So if we resize this to see how it looks on an iPhone 4, we'll see that the label with the valid auto layout is now going to look great no matter what device we're running on. It just scales perfectly. But our panda, well, that's not moving or scaling at all, which is, you know, sad panda. So we want to kind of bring this closer to the middle. That will do-ish. Um, and we'll start... Not 100% sure. Let's uh, let's put the label up there. We'll pop this in the middle. Again, like before, I'm going to anchor to the side. So we'll go uh, to X value is now a couple of pixels. Uh, we've now got a width, which again is a couple more pixels. But we're missing a Y value. This has three values right now. And if we click on the triangle, it's going to complain. We don't have a Y value. We need one more. One more constraint. So we'll set its Y value to be the center of the super view. We could also do its x value to be the center of the super view, but we're going to do y value to be center of the super view. And now we've got a valid auto layout, and it's, we know that because it's gone blue. So if we look at the constraint of this label, we'll see that we've got uh, the center y. We're going to select this and edit it, and we're going to go 1.1 over 1. So we're just going to push that down a little bit. And this is just a little bit of trial and error until we get it exactly how we want it to look. That looks about right for me. So we're now, you know, a little bit just off center of whatever the view is. And again, if we look at this on a different device, you'll see that no matter how big or small that screen is, it's going to be just a little bit off centered for us in terms of the Y value. So now we can go ahead and add our sad panda back in. And we'll just hook it to the side so it's got its x value again we're going to set its width by anchoring it to this side we can set its height to be fixed because you know this will look great no matter what device we're on we could also anchor it to the top of the view if we wanted um, but there's no need if we just do height it will look great um, and now we can do its y value by anchoring to the my panda so wherever the, the my panda is going to be offset to the the panda image will look at the top of that and that will be the margin in which it works out its Y value from. So if we were to move this, this would now move. So it's all kind of interrelated when we look at the UI for uh, using auto layout. And we can see that this now looks great on any device. So that's a little bit of auto layout. It's very, very simple once you remember X, Y, width and height. 
You select the controls by just double tapping and dragging these uh, handlebars. If you have the little orange um, triangle down here, you want to tap that and it will tell you what's missing within your auto layout. Um, it can resolve some auto layout issues for you. Um, I tend to find personally that you know if you've got a problem with an auto layout for a control, just select it, come up here, remove the constraints and just start adding constraints again from scratch uh, and you can very quickly fix all of the errors. So everything you've just seen me do here within Zara Studio works exactly the same within Visual Studio. Um, it still works on that handlebar approach. Everything still needs an X, a Y, a width and a height. Um, so don't be scared if you're using Visual Studio and you're looking at this going, well, my IDE doesn't look like that. It works exactly the same. So I've been Mike James. That's Auto Layouts and uh, see you next time.